I think there's been, at least among organized groups, a bit of a fall off. On the other hand, young people are really deeply involved in ways that um, in some ways generations in the past haven't been on more independent projects that are a little bit less associated sometimes with large established organizations. But I think you're right that it helps when there's a, a real focus on it as something that's very important to the future of, of the nation and, and of communities. I think one of the things that President Bush uh, people are, are sensing because of the number of years they've kind of watched him is that for him, he believed that um, an awful lot of the meaning in a person's life um, and the adventure in, in somebody's life is this opportunity to engage with people who are different than you are, who are strangers, and at the same time where you can help. Um, and so he, he had this wonderful phrase that he used um, that any definition of a successful life must include serving others. And it was this notion that um, all of us are trying to live lives um, of meaning and, and uh, success uh, broadly defined. And he, he said, you know, this is the way to live that kind of life, to spend at least a little part of your life and time helping people who, um, who need help. So I think that's a very old idea. It's, it's an ancient idea, but it's one that, that we all need to be reminded of um, because when people live those lives, they're among some of the, some of the people who find that they're, they're actually the happiest. Greg, as we watch some of these arrivals at the National Cathedral, I'm curious, I mean, the, the words point of light, a uh, thousand points of light, are so politically potent and came to really define so much of his legacy. I mean, I know Peggy Noonan had uh, some involvement in writing the words, but any color on the etymology of that term and how he embraced it? Did he think of it first? Did Peggy bring it to him? And he said, that's it, something like that? You know, it's a great question, Carl. Um, there's a little bit of controversy about it. Um, Peggy certainly used, used it in the draft of the speech for the convention um, in 1988. And, um, but I've heard that President Bush himself um, was the one who, who uttered the words in talking. I don't know whether that's right or not, but I've heard both. Um, it was a phrase that, that actually was used near the founding of the country in, in a sense that either Jefferson or Adams wrote a letter apparently to George Washington trying to engage his interest in becoming the country's first president and said, General, you stand in a point of light for the country. And so it, it has a wonderful rich history. Um, I think that the power of it in my mind, um, because when President Bush came in, he wasn't really um, focused on that sentence so much as he said, I really want voluntary engagement in the lives of one another to become a major part of my presidency. And he created this office that he asked me to head that was the only structural change in the White yeah. House that he made. Um, but he, the phrase, I think, and I think he believed, was so uh, transcendent and, and evocative that everybody has light inside them that can be revealed. So, it was it was a powerful and is a powerful image and i think the fact it's continued to rise as an idea associated with him is because as he's gotten old as he got older people more and more people really saw that that was the way he was not only living his life and the way barbara Bush lived, lived yeah, her it, life so yeah. i think it's been a powerful idea yeah i was just going to mention i just read peggy newton's uh, book about her experiences there and she talks about looking through those old uh, papers in the White House and mm. finding those kinds of phrases. So. By the way, Greg, as we're, as we're talking, we've seen a number of uh, high-profile uh, names enter the cathedral. There's Colin Powell, of course, former Secretary of State, along with Condoleezza Rice a moment ago, uh, Tommy Thompson, uh, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Which will lead us directly to a conversation about the president's love for sports, and be it I, football I or baseball. It, the sports teams will be greeting uh, the plane upon his arrival back in Texas. And he, as I'm hearing, was a phenomenal baseball player uh, in his youth at Yale and otherwise. So I was in line. I'm, at, I'm outside the cathedral now. And coming over, um, I was with Pam Shriver. And she said last night there were a whole group of sports um, coaches and athletes who visited the rotunda 
um, to pay their respects and then went out to dinner. And it, and I then spoke to Coach K, who was on the same bus, but there were Jack Nicholson, uh, Peyton Manning, uh, Pam Shriver, Coach K, Ben Crenshaw. Um, there were uh, there were probably 20 um, really wonderful uh, athletes and, and coaches who were all great buddies of, of President Bush. And, Lee, and he just had this, this incredible ease around friendship. And um, uh, there's going to be a song sung at the service today by Michael Smith called Friends, which I just learned. Uh, uh, he was a great friend of President Bush. And I'm looking forward to the song because President Bush decided, of course, what he wanted sung, and I think this will be the president's own preaching to those of us in in the room when you hear the words of this song uh, called Friends, and I think that that these groups that are here um, are really a sign that that he really thought uh, everybody, strangers alike, could become friends, Uh, and the highest honor he would put on 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 a picture that he would sign would be to such and such friendship because to him it was like the knights of the round table it was a code of what is the highest the highest value in a relationship is to be a friend and this song is about friends you can't live a life isn't long enough to have your friends is the main theme of this so the fact last night there was this dinner with all they, they had the rotunda and then they, they said coach k said they just told stories uh, into the night last night. So hmm. he was really a remarkable fan. 